Complex Analysis by Sir Duane. Complex Numbers and Functions. Chapter 1. Section 1, I guess? One of the advantages of dealing with the real numbers instead of the rational numbers is that certain equations which do not have any solutions in the rational numbers have a solution in the real numbers. For instance, x squared equals 2 is such an equation. However, we also know some equations having no solution in real numbers. For instance, x squared equals negative 1 or x squared equals negative 2. We define a new kind of number where such equations have solutions. New kind of numbers will be called complex numbers. Section 1, Definition. The complex numbers are a set of objects which can be added and multiplied. The sum and product of two complex numbers being also a complex number and satisfy the following conditions. 1. Every real number is a complex number, and if alpha and beta are real numbers, then their sum and product as complex numbers are the same as their sum and product as real numbers. There is a complex number denoted by i such that i squared equals negative 1. 3. Every complex number can be written uniquely in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. 4. The ordinary laws of arithmetic concerning addition and multiplication are satisfied. We list these laws. If alpha, beta, gamma are complex numbers, then alpha times beta, like in parentheses, times gamma is equal to alpha open quantity, beta times gamma close quantity, and open quantity alpha plus beta close quantity plus gamma is equal to alpha plus open quantity beta plus gamma close quantity. We have alpha times beta plus gamma is equal to alpha times beta plus alpha times gamma and beta plus gamma times alpha <coughs> you know in parentheses that's alpha is equal to beta times alpha plus gamma times alpha we have alpha times beta is equal to beta times alpha and alpha plus beta is equal to beta plus alpha if one is the real number one then one times alpha is equal to alpha This is rather dark. If zero is the real number zero, <coughs> then zero times alpha is equal to zero. We have alpha plus negative one times alpha is equal to zero. We shall now draw consequences of these properties. With each complex number a plus bi, we associate the point a, b in the plane. Let alpha equal a sub 1 plus a sub 2 times i and beta equal b sub 1 plus b sub 2 times i be complex numbers. Then alpha plus beta is equal to a sub 1 plus b sub 1 plus open quantity a sub 2 plus b sub 2 close quantity times i. Hence, addition of complex numbers is carried out component-wise. For example, open quantity 2 plus 3i close quantity plus open quantity negative 1 plus 5i close quantity is equal to 1 plus 8i. In multiplying complex numbers, we use the rule i squared is equal to negative 1 to simplify a product and to put it in the form a plus bi. For instance, let alpha equal 2 plus 3i and beta equal 1 minus i. Then alpha times beta is equal to open quantity 2 plus 3i close quantity 1 open quantity 1 minus i close quantity is equal to 2 open quantity 1 minus i close quantity plus 3i open quantity, 1 minus i close quantity is equal to 2 minus 2i plus 3i minus 3i squared. 
is equal to 2 plus i minus 3 times negative 1 is equal to 2 plus 3 times i is equal to 5 plus i. <clears throat> Let alpha equal a plus bi be a complex number. We define the conjugate of alpha to be a minus bi. Thus, if alpha is equal to 2 plus 3i, then the uh, complex conjugate of alpha is equal to 2 minus 3i. The complex number, complex conjugate of alpha is called the com is called the conjugate of alpha. We at once see that alpha times its complex conjugate is equal to a squared plus b squared. With the vector interpretation of complex numbers, we see that alpha times its conjugate is the square of the distance of the point AB from the origin. We now have one more important property of complex numbers, which will allow us to divide by complex numbers other than zero.